Hi, this is Monica A. Coleman. I am the author of the forthcoming book, Bipolar Faith, A Black Woman's Journey with Depression and Faith. And I'm uh, joining a little, joining again to um, try out Periscope and see how this goes. I'm enjoying it so far. And talk about the one question I get asked more than anything else. And that is, people ask, what are my spiritual practices? Hello, those who are joining us, Ms. ARW. Hi. Um, I've seen a couple others join in. More than anything else, people ask me, what are my spiritual practices? Hi, Frank. Um, what do I do to live uh, successfully with, with a depressive condition? Or how do, if you want to call it successful, um, how do I manage? What are my spiritual practices? What do I do? What do I believe? And I've been talking a bit lately um, in the last couple periscopes about having the right equipment and realizing that sometimes I don't have what I need. Um, I was talking about cycling and not having my shoes adjusted properly. Well, would you believe I went to the store, I bought the little tool that I needed to buy, I showed the tool to you all, and um, in my eager, <laughs> my eagerness to um, adjust my shoes and get the right tools, I ended up stripping the bolts and had to take my shoe into the bike shop where they pulled out a drill <laughs> to completely um, get pull the clips out of my shoes. Hi, Joker1112. Hi, Bobby1163. Thank you for joining us. Um, and sometimes it's a metaphor that, like, I have just overreached what my own abilities are to fix my own problems. Uh, hello, those of you who are joining us. Um, and I think I can do it. I think I can get a little tool. And sometimes I just need professional help. And I find that to also be true with living with a depressive condition. That sometimes I've figured out what I need to do. Hi, thank you all for joining us. And sometimes um, I can just do it myself. I can tweak one little thing. I can evaluate, talk to friends. And other times I just need more professional assistance. Like when I needed somebody to pry <laughs> the bottom off of my cycling clips because I just didn't have the equipment or the know-how to fix my problem. Um, and so one of the spiritual practices and one of the things I talk about exactly, uh, I've been talking about lately, is what it, one of the ways, I, the different tools and different practices I have in living with a bipolar condition. Somebody asked, what is bipolar? Um, bipolar is, thank you for asking, I did not talk about that. It is a kind of depressive condition. Most people think of unipolar, the most widely known sense of depression, which is just being very, very sad and melancholy, unable to function and do the kinds of things um, that you want to do. And bipolar, there are different kinds of bipolar depressions, and a bipolar depression refers to those of us who live with a kind of up, right, and a down with a, you see my hands are here, <laughs> an up and a down, a, a mania and a, um, a mania and with a depressive condition. And one thing that's really important, it's really important for all people, but it's especially important for those who live with depressive conditions, is getting enough sleep. Um, not getting enough sleep can be an indication of a mania. It can um, push one into a mania. And, you know, your body just needs sleep to restore itself, to grow, and to heal. And uh, if any of you all are parents of young children, you know that sleep can be elusive, that they don't always sleep when we sleep. They're taking nice long naps when we're at work. And so thank you all for joining us. So sometimes it can be really difficult just to get the kind of nourishing sleep we need. And in fact, being able to sleep with um, on a regular schedule is even better, which is why there are so many um, poignant and, and really powerful memoirs, I think, out there about how difficult m motherhood, and particularly of a very young child, is um, with managing and living successfully with a depressive condition. And so sleep has been my issue lately. My daughter is in this perfectly normal developmental phase where she wakes up in the middle of the night scared of the dark, scared of whatever, scared of dinosaurs that she's learning about in school, whatever it might be. And it just kills my sleep because I'm not getting that solid hour and a half nap that she's getting at school. And without the sleep, I'm cranky, I'm tired, I'm not functioning well, I'm making decisions, should I work out or should I sleep, knowing I need to do both, never finding enough time. 
And so I am going to sleep. <laughs> That's one of the spiritual practices I'm really going to um, try to embrace the next couple weeks, and including tonight, but also when I get a chance, grabbing a nap when I can, which is also way harder than it should be. Um, and just trying to fill that tank back up. And that uh, that's part of what the self-care is, right? Is making sure we get the different things that we need to get. Um, different things that we need to get and to do to be all right. And so that's what I'm sharing about. So if you feel like you need sleep or you're thinking about, wow, this is optional. And sometimes sleep feels optional. I have a lot of incredibly productive friends and colleagues who, when they are trying to figure out how to get all their work done, sleep is what they give up. And um, I really can't afford to do that. So this is a reminder that sleep is a good thing, that we all need sleep. Um, and I know I definitely do. So I'm going to sign off so I can get to bed early tonight. Um, again, I hope you've enjoyed these, that you continue to sign in with me as we talk about different ways of living with uh, spirituality, with spiritual practices, with living with a depressive condition, uh, how I maintain my own bipolar faith. Uh, if you're enjoying this, feel free to follow me on Periscope. I'm at Rev Monica, R-E-V-M-O-N-I-C-A. You can check me out here. You can also uh, just tweet or share about it. I'm on hashtag bipolar faith. Uh, thank you all very much.